Welcome to the Tech Today podcast with your host, John Maeda. Fed Chair Jerome Powell needs to channel Dr. No from the James Bond series. Dr. No goes way back to the beginning of the Bond series when Sean Connery was James Bond. And the reason I say that Powell would do well to channel Dr. No is simply that Powell needs to learn how to say the word no. Powell's going to face a lot of pressure this year from multiple fronts. And if he's going to help maintain the United States' fiscal solvency, and I realize he's on the monetary side, but if he's going to help maintain the United States' fiscal solvency, he's going to learn how to say no more often. You know, since 2008, in my view, the Fed has played Robin to Treasury's Batman. And their primary function is to fund the government. And you may say, well, John, it's Treasury that funds the government by issuing debt. Well, that's true. There is less appetite for Treasury debt versus 10, 20 years ago from private investors in sovereign nations. So the Fed increasingly has had to pick up the tab and subsidize that debt. And Powell's going to be facing a lot of pressure this year. If you think about the banks and the hundreds of billions of unrealized losses that they have on their balance sheets, they're going to want to see rates come down in order to reinflate the the value of those bonds, those assets on on the bank balance sheets and and narrow the the unrealized losses. the commercial real estate owners, particularly if you think about the owners that are in the office space and the holders of that debt, whether those holders be banks or private institutions, that's going to take a long time to sort itself out the uh, the office market, particularly when you think about older buildings that there's just very, very little appetite for. And so pricing is going to have to come way down. And I don't know if pricing even solves the equation. It's just tenants want want new. And so that's almost a separate issue, a separate podcast. But suffice to say, the commercial real estate owners are going to pressure uh, Powell. Private equity firms, kind of the same deal. These guys are used to doing deals with 100% debt. And lately it's been 100% equity. Institutional retail investors, and I'm thinking more about kind of the traditional long onlys, the equity guys, they would love to see lower rates. The political class for sure. All the folks in Capitol Hill, the Biden administration, they would all love to see Powell and the Fed ease monetary policy. And I think too often Powell has caved and he said yes. I mean, who has seen, who has overseen, if you think about out of the Fed chairs, the ultra easing of monetary policy like we've had under Powell? I can't think of one. I mean, he, he grew the money supply. If you, if you look at the money supply as measured by M1, and you look at it in Feb 2020, just before COVID hit and before we started to ramp up spending, between Feb 2020 and March of 2022, M1 grew by 419%, which is just insane and and irresponsible for any Fed chair to oversee that type of money, money, money supply growth. Somewhere in there, he ought to have pushed back. I, I, I don't care that we had a lockdown. He should have pushed back on that. But instead, the Fed went out. I don't need to rehash the full story here, but they printed. We had QE, $90 billion of treasuries a month, plus $30 billion of agency buys per month, $120 billion per month in total. They created all sorts of uh, non-recourse loan facilities, which was just egregious. I mean, we, we published a, a list of... Uh, Companies that receive funding subsidized by the Fed. 
most of whom didn't need capital. I mean, the, the Fed, if you recall, they, they participated in Apple's debt offering. I mean, do they, do they really need to do that? And Apple wouldn't have issued that debt were it not for rates being at, at zero. You also got to see Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. She'll be in Powell's air on behalf of Congress and, and President Biden. It's going to be intense pressure on Powell this year to ease, given that it's an election year. Biden obviously would like to see lower rates to help spur the economy. Yellen would like to see lower rates to help ease the Treasury debt burden. Not that lower rates will uh, reduce the debt level outstanding, but the, the cost of servicing the debt is exacerbated by, by higher rates. I also think, I said the other day, I'm roughly 60-40. I believe the Biden administration will try to push through stimulus checks, which I believe that would be the, the you know stimulus 3.0, once under Trump, once under Biden, and this would be the, the second tranche under Biden if that were to happen. And I, you know, I would love to see the GOP push back on a stimulus effort and have an adult conversation with the American people as to why stimulus checks are a bad idea. The answer, of course, being that they cause price inflation by reducing purchasing power by way of diluting the value of money in circulation. Right? Every time you, you print the new dollar, you reduce the, the value of, of, uh, of the money supply that, that's outstanding. Just like you would dilute equity outstanding if you issued new new primary shares and you know I'd, I'd hate to see another trillion dollar plus effort to mail helicopter money to americans but i just i feel like this gop would cave for fear of being painted as the bad guys in an election year rather than have the adult conversation with americans to say, look, if, if we print and mail money, you're going to have price inflation. And, and you know, price in, inflation from the last tranches under Trump and Biden hasn't even flatlined yet. And now we want another step function up. So I just, I don't think this GOP is capable of having that adult conversation. To me, uh, they are a liberal party and the Democrats are an ultra-liberal political party. And the answer, of course, would be fiscal austerity, but I just don't see this government being capable of restraining itself insofar as fiscal spending is concerned. So hopefully Powell will grow a backbone. Uh, I just think he's going to face immense pressure this calendar year. And I think the first test will be in March, April. If you recall, on March 11th, the Fed bailout, the bank term funding program, is due to expire. And I think once that expires, you're going to see banks rush to the discount window. And if we should see depositors start to make withdrawals, it could get dicey for the banks. And will the Fed have the stomach to observe bank failures? Or will they come to the rescue? That's all for now. See you next time.